Almost a year ago, I posted a video of this aquascape. When I posted the video, I was feeling super proud of how the aquascape was looking. But then, a few months later, this is how it looked. Today, the aquascape looks like this. Welcome to the Underlife. In this video, I'm going to show you how I took my aquarium from this to this using the scientific method and why you should not use a scientific method to fix up your aquascape. My goal with this video is to save you weeks of time if you're considering using the scientific method on your aquascape like I did. By the way, I'm talking here and uh, my beetles are climbing having a good old time right behind me. Look at that. Scaling the great mountain. Six footsteps at a time. Such a hero. Okay, picture this scenario. You're walking in the city and you see a kid sitting on the curb. Uh, he, he has no parents around. He's dirty, no shoes. He has no shirt. He's crying. Uh, it's clear that many things are wrong. Uh, you're walking with your friend and you and your friend say, oh, we really need to help this kid. And your friend says, okay, oh, hold on. I'm going to use the scientific method. Uh, let's figure out one variable at a time what this kid needs. Because, you know, he's crying. He definitely needs something. So let's start by just giving him water. And you're like, this is kind of strange, but okay, I guess giving him water can't hurt. So you give the kid water, <clears throat> he drinks it, and continues on crying. And so your friend's like, okay, no worries. Um, let's, let's move on to another variable. Um, uh, do you want a, a pat on the back, little kid? Will that, will that help you? And you pat him on the back and he just, he just keeps on crying. When things started really going south in this aquarium, I had this cool idea that I would fix it one variable at a time and actually uh, make a video like this about what I did to solve the, the issues. This is actually my first full-on high-tech aquascape, so I wanted to learn also for myself um, what variables it took, what, what was going wrong so I could know for the future and share about it. And I thought, okay, well, if I change a whole bunch of things at once, I'm not going to know what variable I changed that actually fixed it. A little fact about aquatic plants, or maybe all plants, is it takes them a long time to respond to each change. So I would make a change, make a little tweak, and have to wait two, three weeks to see if it had any effect. So let's say that this goes on for a while and your friend just keeps trying different variables one at a time and nothing is working. And you stop him, you're like, come on, enough, all right? Let's actually get this solved. Let's cut this BS and get this kid some help. What are you gonna do? Of course, you're gonna pick this kid up, just stop trying to be scientific about it, be an emotional, caring human, and give this kid everything he needs, everything that you can picture that he needs all at once. Sorry, one more look at the beetles. I know you, I know you clicked on this video because you like fish, but... Look at this. Reach. This is a different beetle. I tried probably a dozen different tricks and different variables, um, and I'm gonna run through them pretty quickly, uh, the different things that I tried. And please, if there's something you wanna know more about, um, write a comment and I'll try to make another video, a follow-up video, um, sharing more about that specific thing. Probably the first factor I tried to change was lighting. And I was nervous when I bought the light that goes onto this tank that it might not be bright enough. Uh, but usually when algae is present, the lights are too bright most of the time. So I started bringing the lights down. Another thing I tried to do is have the right algae eaters in there. So I had a mono shrimp, neocaridina shrimp, and snails. And um, they seemed to help some, you know, you see them going around eating algae, but uh, if it's 
any clue. I don't have any shrimp in the aquarium right now. I just have some bladder snails and, uh, and I do have some hill stream loaches, but algae eaters weren't a big factor for this. As things continued going downhill, I started testing my water more and through testing it, I realized that the fertilizer I was putting in was undetectable in the water. So that was a big clue. I thought, okay, uh, maybe it's all a fertilizer thing and I need to be putting more in there. So um, I doubled the dose on the bottle and then like tripled it. It was on the bottle, it said to do 1.5 milliliters twice a week and I upped it to uh, 1.5 milliliters per day and then just kept going up from there and just kept having trouble detecting any of the uh, nutrients in the water so I upped it, upped it, upped it and that was a path that I continued trying to work on with this figuring out am I putting too much fertilizer in or not enough Continuing with my water testing, I started testing KH and GH my suspicion was that the Siriu stone that I had in there was leaching uh, minerals into the water and causing too high of a water hardness. So when I tested the KH and GH, I found that they were off the chart. They were actually off the chart of the test kit. And so that was a signal that there was probably a big problem there. And I bought a RO filter, started making RO water and doing my water changes only with completely demineralized water to try to get rid of that extra mineralization. I keep getting up and down from my desk to like change things with the camera. I just put a new battery in and I'm going up and down and I like I got a little winded. Um, so another thing that I tried was I noticed that some air bubbles were shooting out of my lily pipes all the time, the, uh, coming out of my filter. And the filter is great capacity uh, for the size of the aquarium, great amount of water flow. So I wasn't worried about that, but I thought maybe these bubbles that keep blowing out are de decreasing the amount of CO2 that's in the water. Um, so I traced where air was getting into the line and I found that at the top seal of the canister filter, um, air was getting in. And so I used some, some sealant around the, all of the seals. I, I say all of them, I think there were two seals. Um, and that completely fixed that, no more air bubbles coming out. Unfortunately, that wasn't the magical fix that didn't fix my algae problems. The health of the aquarium actually kept going down and I decided to go drastic with this and do a full blackout. So that means you wrap the whole aquarium with something that prevents all light from getting in and uh, that is really hard on the algae. So I did that for uh, five days or a week and once I removed that covering, uh, I saw that the algae was affected. Uh, the algae looked like it wasn't thriving so much, but as soon as I gave the tank light again, the algae just came bouncing right back. I think the plants were just so unhealthy that they didn't have it in them to compete with the algae even after the blackout. Suspecting that the plants were just too far gone and too weak to compete with the algae, I decided to actually tear out almost everything. I tore out the entire Monte Carlo carpet and I tore out all of the stem plants because those were especially bad and decided to replant, keeping all of the same, uh, all of the same hardscape. I also suspected that part of the reason for the initial health of the aquarium, followed by it slowly declining, was that the aqua soil might have been slowly depleting. So I put in all new aqua soil and um, a lot of root tabs to make sure that the nutrients in the soil were all set for the new plants. Initially after replanting I kept the nutrients in the water column pretty low. I was really suspicious of the fact that I was putting so much over the recommended dose on the bottle. <clears throat> it's almost nine o'clock and the lights are going down in the aquarium. Say good night to these guys that I'm talking about. Good night. Their light went off too, so I'm gonna use my phone here to augment. Focus. Shameless promotion for uh, 
for these modules which I 3D print and sell. I promise this guy was not sponsored by Under. All opinions are his own. Look at him, enjoying his life in there. If only my camera would focus. Okay, back to talking about the aquascape. Completely replanting the plants definitely helped and I saw that the new plants were a lot healthier, but probably only a month in, I could already see signs that the health of those plants were declining and things were going in the same direction as they went before I replaced the plants. I decided to move the CO2 drop checker to the back left corner where it gets the least amount of CO2 and base my CO2 measurements on that. I also started turning on my CO2 a full, I think three hours before the lights come on so that once the lights come on, the drop checker is already a good, pretty bright green, meaning that the aquarium has a lot of CO2 all day, right from the start. I also got a pump uh, to put in the back where there is the least amount of flow to try to get the CO2 the whole way around the aquarium circulating and, uh, and also blow up debris that would settle in dead spots. I started doing more water changes and being more aggressive with the water changes, making sure to get any bits of malm or debris that was falling down inside of the aqua soil. I dosed hydrogen peroxide on the areas that had bad algae. This effectively killed algae, but also burnt a lot of the Monte Carlo in the process. I also decided to return to dosing really high levels of nutrients. In the end, I was able to get my aquarium healthy, but in the process, I realized that the aquarium is like that child in the city. Like a person, an aquarium is a complex biological system with a whole lot of interdependent parts. If you remove completely any one of those parts, the whole thing will crash. And it's not until you build up all of those parts at the same time that you can have any sort of health in the aquarium. What I ended up doing was spending months changing one variable at a time for my aquarium child. And in the meantime, things just kept declining, declining, declining. And I wasted so much time. I realize now that if I did everything that I thought could be wrong uh, at the same time, and fixed multiple variables at once, I could have been back on track a lot more quickly. This doesn't mean that you make drastic changes to the aquarium, so that advice is out there and I think that is good. And it still fits with the analogy of the child. It's not gonna help this child if you say, oh, well, there's a lot wrong with him, so let's take him out of the city and we'll bring him to the desert. Now he's just gonna be confused and is also still gonna be lacking all this stuff that he needs. So you don't wanna just suddenly say, okay, well, I'm gonna take my pH from five to eight or something like that. You're just gonna shock the whole system. What I'm suggesting is that you change multiple variables slowly, but all at the same time. This also doesn't mean that the scientific method is bad when it comes to aquariums. It's just not a good method for fixing your aquarium and getting it back on track quickly. So um, I've seen some people do aquarium tests, aquarium experiments like MJ Aquascapes. He will do uh, one aquarium with say no CO2, another with CO2 side by side that functions only as an experiment. He doesn't care if one or both of them completely go downhill, it's just to see if that variable will change it. This is a completely different scenario and it's a, it's a great experiment. Another thing that this makes me think about is uh, how many times I go on a forum and somebody says something like, you just need higher light. You just need more light, a better light and uh, everything will work out. Or you just need more filtration and people will give a simple one word answer. Maybe not one word answer, but one variable answer. <laughs> they say to change just this one variable and it'll all be good. But it's likely they're saying that because they had an aquarium where all of the factors were in place and everything was all ready to rely on each other. You need to have that interdependency. And they just added that final piece and then everything worked. And they thought, oh, well that is the key. This, this higher lighting is what worked for me. So this is the singular key but it might just be that that was the last key in the puzzle for them, and it could be a different key for you. The list that I gave of all the things that I tried could be a good place to start if you're new to the hobby, or especially if you're new to high-tech aquariums. All of this being said, there happened to be one variable that for my aquarium made the biggest difference in going from this to this. I've made a separate video about that variable, 
So you can click that here and see what made the biggest difference for me. Maybe that same variable is what will make the biggest difference for you. Thanks for watching. I hope this inspires you to save time and pick your aquarium child up and give it all the love it needs, every factor, every variable, all at the same time. Go give your aquarium the care it needs. See you later. But the elaborate paraphernalia of the scientist is nothing more than a tool for thinking.